Starting today, I'm living with my mom and dad. Get out, you freeloading housewife. After five years of marriage, my husband abruptly declared it over. Not only did he insult me, but he also tried to sell our precious home without my consent. I couldn't possibly forgive him. As I watched his back, I made up my mind. I will definitely get my revenge. My name is Sherry. I'm 36 years old. I married Ken five years ago. In the beginning, he asked me to be a stay-at-home wife. So, I quit my job when we got married. A few years ago, my parents passed away. And now, we live in the house I inherited from them. When my parents died in an accident, he was always there to encourage me. Sherry, please, don't cry anymore. It's going to be okay. But my mom and dad suddenly... I know, honey. But if you keep crying, your parents in heaven will be worried too. But... It's all right. I'll always be by your side. Thanks to his kindness, I've managed to recover and face my parents' death. I was so grateful to be married to him. But then, an event that threatened our peaceful marriage life suddenly happened. One day, while I was out shopping for dinner, I saw my husband, who was supposed to be at work in the city. He was too far to call out to, but I was sure it was him by his clothes. He entered a real estate office with a big smile and came out looking very pleased. He had left for work as usual this morning. So, why was he here? There was no talk of moving and he had no reason to be at a real estate office. I was so curious about his behavior that I decided to go into the real estate office after he left. I explained to the agent that I was his wife and asked what business he had there. The response was unbelievable. Hmm? Oh, the man from earlier. He said he wanted to sell his family home. His family home? Yes, he said he inherited a big house from his parents and wanted to know how much it would sell for and to start the selling process. I was speechless at this unexpected turn of events. Wait a minute. That house isn't my husband's. It's mine, inherited from my parents. Really? But your husband said you had agreed. What? This is the first I've heard of it. I have the deed, and there's no way he could sell it without my consent. Oh, but your husband definitely said he wanted to sell the family home. What does this mean? He was trying to sell the house I inherited from my parents without my knowledge, pretending it was his. I can't believe it. Normally, selling a house requires the deed, registration documents, and a seal certificate. I have all of those, so there's no way he could sell it on his own. What on earth is he thinking? I found out his intentions that night. Ken, there's something I need to ask you. Before I could confront him, he started. I'm fed up with you. You're in the way. Get out. Huh? He interrupted me and blurted that out first. His parents were behind him, glaring at me. What are you talking about? What do you mean, get out? Exactly what I said. I don't have a shred of love for you. You're worthless as a woman, because you can't even have a child. Are you serious? Stop being annoying. Just leave already. I'm going to sell this house 
and buy a condo with the money. Huh? A condo? I was confused. And then Ken's mother, Lori, spoke up. You know, a high-rise condo near the station. My son's going to buy it. What are you talking about, Lori? Don't call me by my first name so casually. Once you divorce my son, you're just a stranger. It's your fault for not getting pregnant, Sherry. How could you say that? I'm surprised my son put up with you for five years. Such a failure of a wife. Ken's father nodded in agreement. I couldn't believe it. Were these people sane? This was the house I inherited. Do they not understand that? I struggled to contain my rising anger and said to my husband, Stop it! There are things you can and can't joke about. Then he burst out laughing and sneered. A joke? This is no joke. I don't love you one bit anymore. I'm going to live with my mom and dad. I've already found your replacement. Get out, you freeloading housewife. What do you mean, my replacement? And this house is mine to begin with. Shut up, freeloader. We're getting a divorce. What? Just pack your stuff and leave before I get back. If you're still here when I return, you'll regret it. He and his parents left, snickering. I stared after them, dumbfounded. The sound of the front door closing snapped me out of it. What? Live with his mom and dad? What does he think this house is? They're all so presumptuous. I'll never forgive this. They'll regret mocking me like this. And that's how I decided to get my revenge on my husband. A few days later, my unsuspecting husband returned with his parents and a young woman struggling to open the front door. Huh? Why? Why won't it open? He repeatedly tried to insert the key into the doorknob. I unlocked the door from the inside and appeared before them. Then, he gaped at me, pointing. Hey, why are you still here? That's my line. Why shouldn't I be in my own house? I told you to leave. You're just in the way, you freeloader. Oh, yes. You did say that. But if you dislike me so much, shouldn't you be the one to leave? This isn't your house after all. What did you say? He strode up to me aggressively and grabbed me by the collar. Enough already. Who do you think has been supporting you all this time? Actually, who are you again? Huh? Don't get cocky. You're just a wife. Wife? Oh, I'm single though. How strange. Single? Yes. I didn't just change the locks after he left. I had already changed my last name. I revealed the truth to my bewildered ex-husband. After you left with your parents that day, I filed for divorce at the city hall. Divorce? I didn't hear about this. Did I need to tell you? When you left, you were all like, we're getting a divorce, and made a big scene. But I never signed any divorce papers. Oh, don't you remember when you shoved the signed divorce papers at me? Huh? He seemed to have no recollection, but he indeed had handed me signed divorce papers months ago. Back then, we argued 
about living with his parents. I had clearly said no to living with them when we got married. I told you, when we got married, I didn't plan on living with them. And you agreed. I changed my mind. With such a big house, why can't my mom and dad live here too? They want to live here. That's not your call. Anyway, I have no intention of living with your parents. Oh, yeah? Then we're getting a divorce. Huh? Look, I even have the divorce papers signed. My parents told me to divorce a woman who can't respect her in-laws. What's that supposed to mean? Don't talk about divorce so lightly. Well, you're right. A housewife like you wouldn't have the guts to divorce, right? You were the one who asked me to be a housewife when we got married. Shut up. See, this is what I mean. After a big fight, he shoved the signed divorce papers at me. I didn't file them at that time, but I kept them as a contingency. He had completely forgotten about the divorce papers, until I mentioned them. His parents were also dumbfounded by the fact that the papers had already been filed. Amidst all this, one person was clueless. The young woman my ex-husband brought with his parents. Ken, what's going on? She was probably his mistress. She clung to his sleeve in a flirtatious manner. But in the end, you were going to divorce her, right? It's fine since you can marry me. Lisa, well, that's true. If I can marry you, then... And even if you can't sell this house because of that lady, you have enough money to buy a luxury high-rise condo, right? Huh? I've already bragged to my friends that I snagged a rich husband and will live in a luxury condo near the station. Oh, that's... My ex-husband, confused, asked her. Wait a minute. By rich husband, do you mean me? Who else? You work at the famous S Holdings, right? That's a high income if I ever heard one. No, no. But you're a doctor. She made a dumbfounded face. Doctor? Who? You. You work at a hospital, remember? Ah, I do work at a hospital, but just as a receptionist. And it's only part-time. Part-time? I'm quitting my job because I'm getting married. I told everyone at work that my husband works at S Holdings and they were so envious. What? I couldn't help but burst into laughter at their conversation. <laughs> oh, stop. Don't make me laugh anymore, please. Oh, this is too funny. Lisa, unable to bear my reaction, snapped at me. Oh, sorry, sorry. Your conversation is just too funny. <laughs> huh? How rude. Speaking out of turn for a divorced woman? And but the idea of this man working at S Holdings is ridiculous. Huh? Confused, she muttered. What do you mean? I patiently explained the reality to her. Just so you know, <laughs> your beloved works at a mere small to medium sized business that you can find anywhere. How could he afford such a house on a single income? It's impossible. You're joking, right? Were you deceiving me? She glared at him, confronting him. Ken, in turn, retorted. You were deceiving me too, weren't you? You even sent me photos of you in a lab coat, looking all doctor-like. 
That was just cosplay. You said you liked that kind of thing. What? You've been tricking me. You're terrible. That's my line. Talking about high salaries, saying I'll buy you a condo and all that nonsense. You're garbage. It seems they both misunderstood each other's professions and intended to mooch off each other. Once they realized the truth, a huge fight broke out. The in-laws were dumbfounded too, having believed their new daughter-in-law was a doctor. Enough! I was a fool to be deceived by a man like you. Goodbye. As Lisa tried to leave, I stopped her. Wait a minute. What now? Take back your man. I don't want him. It's not about that. I've already looked into your case. I'll be seeking alimony from you too. Huh? Why should I pay? Why? It's obvious. You were involved with my ex-husband while we were still married. If you're going to claim that, show me the evidence. Evidence? I have plenty. After Ken left, I checked his computer. I found a folder full of evidence of your affair, including cozy photos of you two. No way, really? He went that far? Lucky for me, the idiot kept those memories. Thanks to him, I can properly demand alimony from both of you. No! She turned pale and began to shake, collapsing on the spot. Lori, the mother-in-law, interjected trying to calm things down. Everyone, let's calm down. Let's go inside the house and talk. Go inside? What are you talking about? We're divorced. You can't just enter the house. Sherry, this is an emergency. I don't care. This is all because of your irresponsible son. Do you want to escalate things further? Well, that's... Anyway, don't come near here again. If you try to enter by force, I'll call the police for trespassing. The mention of police seemed to have an impact. They left without entering the house, looking dejected. Later, I formally demanded alimony for my ex-husband and his mistress. I thought it was over until my ex-husband called. Sherry, I was wrong. Please, help me. Help you? What are you talking about now? I have no money. I need to take out a loan to pay the alimony. Apparently, he had been splurging on his mistress, believing he could recoup the money from Dr. Lisa. They had a falling out. Now he was broke, struggling to pay alimony, let alone live. But I had no sympathy for him. It's unbelievable I even married that jerk. I told him off. I don't care about your problems. You understand? This is all because you cheated and tried to sell my house. I know. I'm sorry about that. Now I know. You're the only one for me, Sherry. So please, come back to me. What? Apologies won't fix this. Do you realize how much you hurt me? I want nothing to do with someone as awful as you. Pay the alimony, even if you have to take a loan, you scum. And never show up before me again. He shrieked over the phone and hung up. Since then, I've had no contact with him. To pay the alimony, he now works multiple jobs, day and night. Even his retired parents had to work to help with his debts. It's nothing but... Poetic justice. Meanwhile, I did some job hunting and found a job. While my salary isn't especially high and I live a very ordinary life, my days are peaceful and incredibly fulfilling. I've realized I can be perfectly happy on my own. There's nothing to fear anymore. I'm grateful for my peaceful days and look forward to the future.